relying on what you said would have been a safe assumption. I won't make that mistake again. Uh, and it was your CDC and your White House Coronavirus Task Force that made those projections. Governor. Who didn't ask your question? Sir. Governor, you said it earlier that it's undeniable that certain states have fewer uh, cases than others, and therefore it's logical to reopen some states earlier. Along those lines, I think Ann is going to pursue this earlier. I'm not sure I heard an answer. Is it possible, is it likely, are you considering opening up certain parts of upstate New York before New York City? That, my friend, is a good question. I think it's logical to think a reopening plan would take into consideration the differential in infection rates and overall hospitalization rate. It is a metaphor for the nation, right? Certain states now have a much different problem than other states. If you have less of a problem, you can reopen faster. That's essentially true. Uh, and if you're in one state and parts of the state are in a different situation than other parts of the state, why can't those parts of the state open sooner? I think they can. How much sooner, when, how do you do it, how do you phase it in, how do you do it in a way that doesn't complicate or compete with the other parts of the state that aren't doing it, now you start to get granular and it starts to get tricky, and that's what we have to work through. But the overall premise, I agree. Uh, and then you watch that infection rate. And you do have parts of the state that are in a fundamentally different situation than downstate. Now, even those counties that are in a different situation, because remember, a county, if you're looking for a region to open, because a county sometimes is hard, but if you're looking for a region, you don't really have regions in the state that have been immune, because nobody's immune. So you'll see pockets in almost every region. You know, you talk about Western New York or Central New York and Mohawk Valley, you'll see pockets in every region. You can find a county that is in a different situation. But what we have to think through is even if you started to, if you did that, if you said, okay, that county starts to open up, what happens to all that pent up demand from the rest of the state of people who are dying to get out of their house? And would you create inadvertently a problem for that place where you'd see all sorts of people descending there because that's now opened, right? Uh, the first barber shop to open, you know, there's gonna be a line going out the door. The first hair salon to open, right? The first, uh, we were literally on the phone with my colleagues, marina to open, you know, it's gonna, so that has to be thought through and that has to be coordinated. And we are on the cusp. We have to start to deal with these issues, but we're just coming out of, we're still in the midst of a public health crisis. And just because the numbers are flattening, you know, let's not take our eye off the ball. Can you put up the Navarro memo just for kicks, just to make sure, CDC, Coronavirus Task Force, and Mr. Peter Navarro's memo to the president, which the president said he never read. Peter Navarro says 100 million Amer Americans could be infected. As many as one to two million souls could be lost. So whose projections were wrong? Head of the CDC, Peter Navarro, and uh, head of the White House Corona Task Force. Fire them all. That's what I say. Fire them. You know the show with the, what the president did? You're fired. If he wants to fire someone for projections, retake his TV career, those are the three documented. So if he wants to blame someone for the projections, blame the CDC, Peter Navarro, and uh, whoever's on the Coronavirus Task Force, because it's their projections. Can you explain a little bit about why? Peter Navarro, you can fire. Can you explain a little bit why this got under your skin today? You obviously are uh, not pleased with what the president said. No, no, it's what he said. But why, why this particular criticism? You guys have tra traded barbs in the past. Well, yeah, well, this is an important moment. He's saying, 
he doesn't want, want to provide funding to the states, and he doesn't want to help on testing. And I can tell you the states can't do it otherwise. And if this testing doesn't work, that's a serious problem. I don't care about his politics, uh, but if we don't have federal help on testing, that's a real problem. 